at CDTA, and none of his work could flourish without the teamwork of everyone involved. In his spare time, he enjoys mountain biking, traveling to Honduras, Puerto Rico, and Mexico. He says he recently planted a grapevine to make his own grapes and is now scuba diving certified. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We asked Ed about his retirement, and though it is nowhere near being on the horizon, he said he is going to um, spend that time when he does retire um, in a hammock that hangs from a mango tree That's somewhere right. in the world. That's right. Somewhere in the Caribbean. Somewhere in the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But we're glad you're sticking around for um, a few more years, at least. I hope so. Yes. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that Ed story is a little unconventional. Right, right. It's not a uh, hire him as a part-time bus operator and move along, but his story is unique. I remember when Ed was working for the contractor at the trailer uh, over at Rensselaer Rail Station, and he was uh, the jack of all trades. Um, he seemed to be there every single day. Um, we were looking for contractors and couldn't find them. Uh, I remember a certain chairman. Some of our own staff. Some of our own staff. <laughs> a certain chairman come in when I was there. Where the hell is so-and-so? And Ed was the only guy who knew. Uh, he's come over to CDJ and I think helped us make uh, a lot of improvements to our facility. So thanks, Ed. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, everybody. I really, my success, I got to give the credit to a lot of people in this room um, because my project, they disrupt everybody. And everybody is so good about just adapting and moving forward. Stacy, you had an example this morning where an issue arises and you, know, you explain what the issue is. And the response is always the same for managers and directors. What do we do? How do we move forward? And we just work together to do it. And that's been the key to a lot of my success is Lance and Gary and Stacy and everybody in this room. And it's, it's really been nice. The, team, the teamwork here is fantastic. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. and activities for the committee meeting for today's board meeting. Uh, Lisa Morello did provide us an update on the uh, state budget. An increase in snow is still on the table, and we're optimistic that we'll be higher than the governor's proposal. Uh, I also appointed uh, uh, Pat Lance to chair the nominating committee to prepare a slate of officers. We'll be hearing his report shortly. Um, we are also uh, refreshing the board uh, committee assignments uh, for the New year, new fiscal year. Uh, I will continue as chair of the Board Operations Committee. Uh, Dan Lynch will chair the Performance Monitoring Committee. David Stackbro will chair the Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee. And Mike Rashon will remain as chair of the Strategic and Operational Planning Committee. Uh, Mike is also chairing the West Facility Ad Hoc Committee that was appointed a few months ago. Uh, thanks to everybody who comes to our meetings. And, uh, the chairs of the committee who have to put in a, a some amount of time to prepare for each meeting and for each board meeting. Appreciate your work and commitment to the board. And our next uh, board operations committee is slated for May 17th, 9.15 a.m. here at 110 Water Valley. Any questions about that committee report? If not, then we'll move on to uh, the Performance Monitoring Audit Committee, Denise Figueroa. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Performance Monitoring and Audit Committee. Uh, met on April 19th, uh, right here at 110 Water Relief Avenue and on uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, we have eight consent agenda <laughs> items today, so that's why I'm getting a pat on the back okay. here. <laughs> Got my cup of tea ready. Okay, so the first one is approval of the contract for infrastructure upgrade. Uh, we issued an invitation for bids for a consultant to assist and design electric infrastructure upgrades to our Albany facility. Five bids were received, and staff recommends a contract to the low bidder, Castleman Electric. 
They worked for us in the past, and we were satisfied with their service. Uh, so we need a motion to award a two-year contract to Castleman Electric of Manans for an amount not to exceed $2,513,287. Second a motion on this resolution? So moved. Thank you, Denise. Second. Mr. Peter. Any comments, questions? Yes, Dave. Mr. Chair, I, I um, fully support the resolution and the path that we're on, but I just want to, um, partly because it was part of our discussion in our board retreat, um, just raise the caution flag that we're starting to move more into this process. And there's a lot about this electrification stuff that is still untested, unproven. Uh, in some cases, the things that we've been told as far as uh, what we're getting, uh, we didn't actually get. I mean, we thought we were going to charge 12 buses, but we're only able to charge eight buses. Um, they're just things that we need to be cognizant of as we go through this. It's new. So there are some in the industry that are further ahead of us in this. I think there's an opportunity to continue, and I know staff relies on their peers in the industry to get information, uh, to continue to rely on what, what has worked, what isn't working, where maybe there is a need to raise caution. Um, you know, battery degradation is occurring at a faster rate than we thought it was going to. That's an issue, you know, in, in continuing to provide for uh, the fleet to be able to get out there. Um, we saw California had issues this summer, this past summer, when temperatures rose and the governor needed to tell people to not charge their electric stuff. So there are things that are not perfect yet, and I know we can't maybe ever get to perfect, um, I do think this is the right way to go. I will be much more comfortable personally as a board member when we have an alternative that is zero emission and, and is not just pure electric where we're reliant on a supply that right now may not even be sufficient to power all of the things that are supposed to become electric. So again, it's not a, you know, all the reasons for doing this are good reasons. I support it all. Uh, I just want to encourage that we continue to be uh, not the hare in this case, not the tortoise, but somewhere in the middle as far as our progress in this in this path forward to uh, a zero emission fleet. Thank you for the cautionary words. Um, so, well, no, Dave and I talked about this. I encourage just his comments and yes, as he always does. Um, you can go ahead and I, I encourage his comments. And I think, I hope we all know that this is a deep rabbit hole, um, and we don't have answers. Uh, that's why we keep moving things in the small pilot form. And we are, um, later this year, I think, we expect to have, or within a year, expect to have a hydrogen bus on property. We will be testing that. Um, again, though, it takes so long in this industry to test, retest, check, and decide to make you know, a directional change. Quite honestly, and Dave and I talked about this, quite honestly, process we have now is tried, true, and tested. Uh, it's not, it's not um, something that uh, we'll just, we just do because it's the easiest way. It's tried, true, and it's tested. And we're breaking away from that. So we are really entering into the land of unknown. But the truth be known, our clean, clean diesel engine is about as clean as you can get. Um, it's cleaner than most of your cars. And I think, again, we've not. this is not the first time we've been through something like this, but this is really a push to be all in. And I guess that's what worries me a little bit, that it's just not there. It's not like we're buying something that's tested and tried. And, um, it's good that we're doing it. I think it's great that we're doing it. Um, you know, there was a point in time when Senator D'Amato uh, would only allow for compressed natural gas buses if he gave us a grant. We said, thank you, but no because we couldn't afford to buy the infrastructure to fuel compressed natural gas buses. We tried diesel electric hybrid buses. We thought that was going to be the answer. Um, and and I'll, do we have any of them that are still in service? We do. We have uh, uh, 66 still up in service in 2007. But the truth well, is we can't get rid of them fast enough. They, they pose their risk. <laughs> so, for challenges. 
It's, it's a lot of money. It's, uh, you know, I think as, as board members, we have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that not only are we doing the right thing, but that it's cost effective. And um, I, I'm comfortable that all of that is happening right now. I just think we need to make sure that we take our time as we take bigger steps in being more in uh, to a higher degree of our fleet becoming electrified or zero emission. And, and at this point in time, the federal government feels the same way as we reversed when we were in Washington two weeks ago. So that's what they're saying. Don't rush into this electric. You're correct. So my apologies. On this issue, I, I just want to re-up something that I mentioned in committee, that the infrastructure cannot keep up with the uh, people that are pushing this to be to happen tomorrow. Uh, we in Albany County are trying to move our fleet to zero emissions, and it is easy to say, difficult to actually get to. Uh, when we do have funding set aside to purchase EVs for our fleet, it can take, we're still waiting on orders that we placed last spring um, to be delivered. So the manufacturing side has not ca caught up, um, and meeting these, these goals are, are great, but actually getting to achieve them is a whole other discussion. And then the infrastructure itself to charge is another massive concern that that uh, I don't know where our garage, what our garage capabilities are to charge these uh, as we bring more and more on board, but that is a, an, an ex a very costly, uh, will be a costly agenda item, and I just want to throw that back out. I love the, the direction we're, we're going in and really expanding our portfolio of options to get to zero emissions. I'm with you, Dave, uh, but I think that having these lofty goals to achieve them tomorrow are just unrealistic. Anything else? It's just, we're not setting the goal. That's, 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 that's what makes this thing so very difficult. And, you know, frankly, we tap dance around the elected officials' goal um, because we certainly don't want to cut off uh, the hand that feeds us. But at the same time, you almost know that we're not going to do exactly what we say we're going to do. So appreciate, appreciate your comments. And uh, I think what we, we really need to do is make sure that the board is constantly informed. Constantly. Are the infrastructure needs for hydrogen lower than electric? Has that been determined? No. I'm just smile. curious. Just, yeah. I think his smile answers yeah. the question. Well, it depends on yeah, your, your definition <laughs> of lower. <laughs> then electric. They're, they're different. Okay. Right. And the hydrogen. Uh, supply chain is even further behind than the electric supply chain. Not saying it is or is it a better technology for better reasons in terms of whether it's safety, efficiency, range, and all those other types of things. But it would literally be impossible to generate a 260 vehicle hydrogen fleet by any perceived timeline at this point. So we will explore hydrogen, but don't ask, well, when are we going to get to 260 hydrogen vehicles? Uh, so, you know, there are companies that not only distribute hydrogen, but they're all now starting to manufacture, not all, but several are starting to manufacture it as well to try to take up that gap in terms of availability of hydrogen. And one's in our own backyard. Anything else? Fire remember correctly, this contract with uh, reimbursed by National Grid? Yes. And, and frankly, you know, hats off to Grid. Grid has been a, you know, they, just like everyone, they have their bureaucratic difficulties. We all do, but they've been a good partner. Okay, I'll call the question then. All those in favor of uh, resolution number 10 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Sure, Chief Regent, Reverend Chief, yourself, let's vote. It's approved.
Okay, next one. Um, approval of a contract for electromobility software. <laughs> exactly. Um, we need to purchase electromobility software to help manage the state of charge and provide predictive analysis for charging electric buses. This software helps to save costs by avoiding peak charging, monitor range performance, and help dispatchers to make service decisions in real time. The insure, uh, to ensure continuity of operations, staff recommends a sole source award to innovations in transportation in it. Um, we need a motion to award a contract to Innovations in Transportation Incorporated of Chesapeake, Virginia, for an amount not to exceed $544,481. Can I get a motion on this contract? Thank you, so Dave. Moved. Second? Peter, thank you. Comments? Discussion? Do we do a, um, uh, uh, expense savings projections when we, when we, summer, in the summary when it says it'll create efficiencies? Or is just any estimates going to Specifically through? related to this electromobility software? Yeah. But the, uh, we don't have a baseline. So this software will help us start the baseline. Okay. We, we don't own any software that can uh, analyze, collect and analyze this data yet. So it's now that we're expanding the program a little bit, it's time to invest in the software that actually lets us get down into the weeds in terms of what this is going to cost and how it's going to work. But just to support, without going into the rabbit hole again, but to support your discussion of a few minutes ago, just, just focus in on uh, predictive Therefore, we didn't need a predictive tool. Okay. Now, we, we will, if you're going to move past pilot, you need a predictive tool to make sure you can you have a handle on where every bus is, what its status is, when it needs to be charged. It's all, this is a completely different game than we're in today. Right. Not saying we can't do it, but it's a completely different game. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. Okay, next item is approval of software, a software license for scheduling system. We need to purchase additional software licenses for the fixed route scheduling system to accommodate peak service levels above 200 vehicles. The software has several features, including fixed route scheduling, run cutting, and trip planning. Cost is based on a one-time license adjustment fee and two additional years of maintenance and support. Uh, so we need a motion to purchase software licensing from Giro of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, for an amount not to exceed $149,896. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Denise. Second? Second. Jersey? Okay. Discussion? Giro, we've worked with them before. Right. All the time. This just adds licenses if I got that right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's so right. This is just point. adding licenses. Standard for our shop yeah. here, I guess. Uh, seeing no other comments, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The abstention is approved. Okay, next one is approval of a contract to upgrade the parking software um, at the Renton Rail Station. The rail station parking management system needs to be upgraded. Uh, the new system features a cloud-based software program, new gates, ticket dispensers, and other hardware enhancements. Uh, so we need a motion to award a one-year contract to access technology integration of alignment skills for an amount not to exceed $352,742. Can I get a motion on this? Dave, second by Peter. Comments? We talked about this quite a bit in committee. Yeah. Other comments? Then all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. Okay, so our next item is approval of a contract for Montgomery County Infrastructure Planning. Uh, we issued a request for proposals for a consultant to assist in the planning and design of infrastructure to support service in Montgomery County. Five proposals were received, and staff recommends a contract to MJ Engineering, a highly regarded firm in the capital region. We need a motion to award a three-year contract with two one-year extensions to MJ Engineering and Land Surveying PC of Clifton Park for an amount not to exceed $637,414. Any 
Should we get a motion on this? So moved. Today, second. Thank you, Dan. Any, uh, any comments or questions? Yeah, just a clarification here. This this is, um, we've been operating service in Montgomery County now for eight or nine months. Um, the group network, well-designed, well-planned, doing well, but there is really no supportive infrastructure, you know, the things that maybe we take for granted here um, in the other four counties, you know, shelters, uh, Lighting, uh, crosswalk redesign, curb cuts, all those types of things that, that help our customers and help us. So MJ will help us uh, as we identify locations, or they will identify locations to help us uh, in that design. Really, it's to catch up with the county, all part of our plan. Great. Anything else? All those in favor of the MJ contract say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. Yes. Georgie. Georgie again will abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item is a contract uh, approval of a contract for marketing services. Our contract for marketing services is about to expire and a new one is required. A request for proposals was issued and five firms responded. Uh, staff recommends a contract to over it media. Uh, our incumbent to uh, uh, provide marketing, branding, and creative services. You need a motion for a three-year contract with two optional years to over at media of Albany, uh, not to exceed $150,000 per year. Any motion on this? Peter, thank you. Second? Second. Jersey? Marketing. You know, John, John made a, 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 gave a presentation here. It's a tough one, right? The incumbent doing a great job. We're very pleased. Um, you know, they, they've been sort of the people behind the scenes on a lot of our branding. Um, but, you know, from time to time, I think it's healthy to, to put it out on the street and see what's out there. And actually, it was pretty spirited competition. I, I think the committee, uh, John's team, uh, did a lot of work uh, ferreting through. But this time, they weren't convinced that the two Competitors uh, poor enough to, 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 to change at this time. So we're real comfortable and happy with Obrit. They do a great job for us. Located in the old Helen oh, and St. Teresa Church up by New Scotland Avenue. Yeah, and that happens to be my alma mater. So, so yeah. I, I probably. That's a lot of time. In, uh, yeah, I wonder what room. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> They're, um, they have a sound studio, and it's uh, it's uh, where the altar boys used to hang out. Probably damp. It's an impressive building. But the walls can talk. Really, if the walls can talk. I wish I would have known. I would have asked for damn much. <laughs> Any other uh, comments on this one? All those in favor of the over contract say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. Okay, and now our last contract for, is for fuel purchases. Uh, we do monitor the fuel closely, uh, looking at forward pricing provided by our uh, supplier, Moravido. Uh, when fuel dropped 27 cents per gallon to 278 from our February contract of $3.05, we locked in the lower amount for an eight-month uh, contract starting January 2024. So we need a motion to award an eight-month contract for diesel fuel to take effect on January 1st, 2024 to Moravido Energy Products of Binghamton, New York for an expected value of $4,168,760. Motion on this. Second. Dave, second by Denise. Comments? Mike and Trish, everything we do to practice down, keep an eye So it's, you know it's volatile. What is it today? Um, it is 305. Yeah. Yeah. Good move. Hope we go. Yeah. And it's what, yeah, it's, it's certainty. Yeah, yeah, it right. is. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. 
and the adoption of our annual budget. CBTA participated in a number of local events to showcase its work in the community, including the Schenectady County Community College Food for Thought and All That Jazz event, the Martin Luther King Job Fair, and emergency transportation to assist with a couple of fires in Albany. Looking ahead, CBTA will participate in United Way 518 Day, assisting with two beautification projects in the community, and CDPHP Workforce Challenge also on May 18th. Any questions? Because if not, um, the next meeting of committee will be held Thursday, May 25th, 11-15 um, at 110 or by Microsoft Teams. Pat? Well, we'll move on to the uh, Strategic and Operational Planning Committee. Uh, which is the mic is Peter Wall. Yeah, I feel a little inadequate with that. Uh, a series of resolutions. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, can wait. We go to last time. Go into the last minute once. <laughs> yeah. um, a con provided an update on. Uh, oh, sorry. That the committee met on April twentieth, uh, twenty twenty three, at twelve p.m. at one ten Waterloo Avenue. Um, and Carm provided an update on ridership and travel patterns for the 2023 fiscal year, and we enjoyed another solid year as our recovery from the pandemic continues. This has been supported by a robust group network and universal access agreements. Our total boarding count topped 13.77 million, which reflected a 20% increase over last year, and 40% more than the year before that. Navigator, contract, and cash ridership made up 41%, 27%, and 26% of total boardings, respectively. We now hold over 30 universal access partnerships as BRT and Trump Routes drive the system. Express and state service ex experience the most uh, improvement of all. Growth is expected to slowly continue, and the upcoming TDP will help guide us. This will, uh, this will still focus on BRT and Trump Routes, frequency and span, and growth in point of market such as Saratoga County. There's also a cybersecurity update. Thomas. Gugesberg provided an update on our cyber cybersecurity initiatives. Our cybersecurity approach is active, people-driven. Goals of the program include implementing a comprehensive, inclusive, and flexible and integrated strategy. We used industry standard, standard cybersecurity frameworks to guide our efforts. The number of endpoints we protect have doubled over the last eight years, so it's important to constantly plan, execute, and reevaluate our program. Based on regulatory requirements, we are well positioned addressing major objectives required to lower our exposure. We have recently implemented cybersecurity threat detection services and are always evaluating our insurance programs. We discussed several risk areas and reviewed numerous employee cybersecurity awareness and training initiatives. Cybersecurity programs for our nonstop attention that are constantly evaluated, and measured, and adjusted as no entity is ever 100% secure, as I can attest to from my data. Uh, the next meeting of this committee will be on May 25th, 2023, at 12 p.m. at uh, 110 Waterloo Avenue. Avenue. Uh, and if there are any questions, please can ask any questions. Uh, next is our uh, nominating committee report. Back to Pat Lance. Thanks, Amy. Uh, it was a, a pleasure to serve on the committee. I want to thank George and you and Pete for their, uh, all their help. And uh, the committee would like to recommend a slate of officers to lead the board. Um, I read a ball for chairperson Jamie LaHutt, for vice chairperson Mike Rashon, for secretary Joe Sperano Jr. I have Julie in there. For treasurer, Denise Figueroa. Okay. Uh, if there's no objections, we'll kind of move this as a slate. So can I get a motion to uh, approve the slate of officers for the new fiscal year? Peter, thank you. Second? Dave, thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? It's approved. Thank you, everyone, for your service. It's a great, great board to serve on, and um, everybody puts in a lot of time. We appreciate being here, and there's a lot of things going on. So, you know, it's, it's going on. <laughs>
We'll move on to the uh, CEO report. Thank you, Jamie. I, I, I was looking through what I wrote, oh. and the great part about this is two thirds of those already covered. Well, I could just add to it, but I think what, what I'd like to do is, is just pick up off what Jamie said. There is so much going on, uh, and that really is what I tried to do and treat it as a year end report. But if you think about it, you know, growing ridership, 13.7 million, and increasing, increasing month over month, increasing throughout the system, not just fixed rate, ERT line, flex, star, uh, computer services starting to fall back. Uh, we expanded into Montgomery County, the first expansion in the history of the authority. We added a fifth county. Um, things are going remarkably smoothly there. The reception in the community has been outstanding. It's probably up to us now to do a little bit more to get a little bit more. Uh, at the same time, we've continued discussions with potentially adding a sixth county uh, in, in Warren County. This, this, these, these types of things would be unthinkable uh, 15 years ago. Um, as, as one of the committee reports uh, acknowledge, we continue to expand mobility choices and the technology that makes them move. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, cybersecurity. We're managing cybersecurity while we add technology to the organization all the time, making, making it, frankly, all that much more difficult. Um, CDPHP cycle, remember when we started it eight years ago, we, abs we had almost absolutely no idea what we were getting into. Um, but sort of like electrification, we learned quick, um, and we built it into, I would argue, one of the premier uh, mobility programs in the capital region, maybe in New York State and the country, and one of the very few transportation systems, transit systems that operates the online show program. We are one of the very few that would even think about operating our own car share program. Uh, it is in its infancy. It is just, we're just scratching the surface of possibilities. And I think as John has reported several times, the possibilities are coming at us faster than we can accept them. It's such a small program, really. We, we need to get out of pilot. Uh, you know, we're not really in pilot, but back door, or back room, we're really in pilot, we can't accept some of the opportunities just yet, but the possibilities are endless. Um, you recall last month, we, um, uh, last, month uh, last month, I think Ross gave us an update on the transit development program. That, that, that work is now underway. That, you know, next to strategic planning is probably the premier um, organizational planning activity. Um, we had to delay it um, because of the pandemic. I'm glad we did because Really, we need a fresh look uh, post-pandemic at what we're doing, how we're doing it, how we lay it out. It really is the groundwork for a lot of decision-making that, that comes about. The purple line, I mean, there's activity all over the place. We've talked about it. Um, the busway uh, is just about done at University of Albany, which connects to a way uh, opportunity in Harriman. It creates about a, more than a mile of, of really the thing that's been missing in BRT BRT light, you know, exclusive right away, uh, east west, uh, that will make the purple line completely different uh, than the other uh, two uh, uh, BRT lines. By the way, we're the only transit system in upstate New York that operates bus rapid transit, even one line. We operate, we will soon uh, operate three. Who would have thought, again, something that would be unthinkable 15 years ago, that we would be building a roundabout? Uh, at maybe the most, one of the most congested and difficult intersections that the capital region has been across this fall. We're doing that. Um, we, we even have our own drone pilot you know, that showed us um, showed us uh, a video of that. I, I don't know where Adam is right now. He's probably taking drone video or something. Um, but it, it, I had to like, sort of pinch myself. This goes back about 16 or 17 years ago. We threw out a target of 40 miles of bus rapid transit. I remember Ray and I, Ray and the lady and I, trying to add up the miles, and the two of us, ah, 40 is a round number. We like that one. I hope it's 40. I hope it's close. But who would have thought you know, that we would actually complete that? It, it, it wasn't a lark, but Ray and I, the little teams, you know, I talked to they throw out a, a goal that's really high and you know, give us something to strive for. Not only did we get it, but you know, in my mind, we're shattering the record. It was 100. 200 for us. Well, we started with the end. 
That was a we always aim hot. That was a <laughs> bar. That was a bar room. I remember that discussion was the back of a town. In my mind, that's where most good ideas start, but yeah, that one was a little silly. But 40 miles even was, was something I, I'm not sure I thought we could get there. We were going to get there. Um, I was there yesterday. We, we are well underway. Uh, Gateway Mobility Hub. Machinery is there, and construction is well underway. We'll be ready to go uh, this summer. And you know, we've talked about transit center mobility hubs for a long time. This is sort of something in the middle, uh, and, and will be you know, in keeping with the development that's going on in that part of New Schenectady. Um, but but right at the base of State Street. At the same time, uh, we're refreshing the red line. Red Line BRT, which is our first BRT line, it's hard for me to believe that that's 12 years old. So while we talk about what we're doing, we're maturing these services and constantly looking to make them better. Uh, it's just, just a remarkable series of activities. Uh, all the while, the normal course of business, you know, which is different today than it ever was before. You know, recruiting is, you know, we used to recruit occasionally, hire occasionally. We recruit and hire like constant, like literally every minute of every day, someone's doing something that's either recruitment uh, or retention. We now have a retention manager. His, his job is only retention. Um, brand new at that, but, but you know, we have we have kind of there. We will soon, um, next couple of weeks, um, begin collective bargaining discussions with our partners from the ATU. Um, we're, we're hopeful for a, um, a, a, uh, an agreement that both sides can move with and, and is good for our employees and good for the company. Um, and we could go on and on. I mean, but, but that's, you know, maybe a, a half dozen uh, of stuff that's, and then you know, we didn't even talk about electrification, all, all of that is a project in and of itself. So hats off to the people around the table, the board and staff for coordinating all this. It's, it's, it's a, remarkable, a, a remarkable sort of beehive of um, you know, and in the middle of it is me who you know, sticks his finger in things and usually breaks them. I'm constantly, you know, not easily satisfied, so I just keep pushing. Uh, but I push hopefully in a way that you know, gets us done. Oh, I told you, we'll get it, Stacey. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we will open. Um, official name? <laughs> Cafe CETA. Cafe CETA. Downstairs. We recently installed a commercial kitchen uh, and are contracting now with the zone uh, catering. And a full catering. And it, uh, they're going to run the kitchen. They will run it. And uh, the menu looks fabulous. Uh, but the, the key thing for us, that's great. But we're also going to have grab and go. We've always struggled with the second and third shifts and how to accommodate them. You know, whatever eatery we have is closed. That that the grab and go, I think, will at least take a big step towards getting us there. And grab and go will be available in Schenectady and Shore. So for the first time, we're linking um, the, the, you know, the three garages, the three centers for employees. So uh, that it's not total um, equality, so to speak, there, but we're getting there. And hats off to Stacy. Uh, I sort of kind of look for volunteers because it doesn't really fit anywhere neatly. Um, and she stepped up and said, I'll do it. Uh, I'm not quite sure she, exactly what she was getting into, but uh, job well done. And, uh, congratulations to, to the officers and to the board. Um, Invariably, I reported when I see it, uh, Eagle Eye Stack will pick it up. We were talking about it yesterday. had a long conversation uh, this week with, with Doug Eaton who's the uh, consultant, who is the architect of our committee structure and governance uh, model. Uh, and it's a little different model. It's not a model that is in use um, in a lot of places. Uh, I think it works. I think it's productive. I think it, it focuses on the right things. We've re-upped it, uh, redesigned it three times. Doug's uh, doing well, uh, still, still active in the industry. Uh, he's kind of cut back on some things. But it was good to talk to him, and he and I spent a lot of time talking about community and stakeholder relations committee, which was the last ad for us, the most difficult one for us to, to sort of get our arms around. And I 
told him what we were doing, and he was um, the hard guy to impress. But I, I think he was impressed with what we're doing, the, 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 the uh, information and you know, being fed through these many, um, even you know, some of the major metrics that we used to, to sort of outline and define the community of it. So um, thank you to everyone for what you do. It's, it's been a great year, and this year will be bigger, better, bolder. Thank you, Carr. Terrific uh, year-end report. Really appreciate it. Appreciate everything you do for the organization, keeping That's everything right. together, you know, on track and on time. Under budget. Under budget. Under budget. Anybody have a question for Carr? Otherwise, we'll move into board member comments. Any board member have anything they wanted to share with the group today? I just. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, well, we, Doug Eady was definitely a game changer, no doubt about it. And I tried to talk Dave into giving us hazardous duty pay when we had to go through all that training. But uh, it was tough, but it showed. Uh, this is a pretty decent organization, there's no doubt about it. It's not everybody's cup of tea. It's different. Uh, Mr. Chair, just sort of an update on, on industry side of things. I still serve as a member of the Finance Committee at APTA. Um, the Finance Committee just approved and passed on to the Executive Committee, so you probably saw that this weekend. Um, the budget for APTA for the July 1 to June 30 upcoming year. I only mention that because there was a lot of conversation in the Finance Committee about the future. Um, and, and concerns, I know we've talked about them here, about finances going forward and, and what could be or what, what may not be. Uh, but APTA is concerned about you know, where the industry will be with this fiscal cliff that we're, we're headed towards, what that will do for attendance at conferences, which means revenue for APTA, as well as dues and the ability of systems to continue to pay dues when they're challenged financially because of this cliff. So it's, it's not just us. I think we're doing the right things and talking about it very early. Um, I think we're in good shape for a period of time. And, and the fact that we're talking about it well in advance of when it could occur, could occur, I, I think is a credit to, to us. So, but it is a, a, a generally, it's a concern in the industry um, broadly. So thank you. Anyone else? said that the community and stakeholder, uh, that, uh, I, for those who weren't here to experience that battle or whatever it seemed well, to be. Well, it wasn't a battle, but you know, we had the, we had the traditional um, committees, even though they're even with us they're, they're kind of unconventional. Most, most even this transit system that I grew up in used to have eight committees. Uh, there was every silo in the organization. Right. And our, our structure is obviously different. You know, we kind of batch, basically it's look ahead, look back, right? Planning looks ahead, performance looks back, and Doug always insisted there needs to be a third committee. And it ought to be, um, you know, what are you doing in the community? What are you doing with stakeholders? What are you doing with outreach? Frankly, we just struggled for a long time with populating the committee. Right. We had to combine to get performance. We put it under a plan. I think it was under both. It's under both. It just didn't different seem to fit. Yeah. We had trouble coming up with agenda items, honestly. Right. Uh, we struggled and we struggled and we struggled and, you know, I think we, we finally figured it out. Um, now I think you know, we're able to populate it. And, 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 you know, Jamie and John have really, you know, been the, the staff people to populate it. Uh, but it was, it was a struggle. Because I, I, just as someone who came on afterwards, I found that to be real powerful information. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's, yeah. it's that missing piece when we go through everything else where we say, okay, well, what, I think we talked before, what's the impact we're having? What do we feel about, <coughs> feel about? And if there's anything we've learned in the last eight to ten years, it almost doesn't matter what the facts are, it's what, how people are feeling. Right? So, yeah, um, that's really nice. I took a big stride was we learned, <coughs> we learned how to bring our message to the people. And that, I think that was a huge bomb. But, but from a governance perspective, I don't think we ever struggled with you know, the fact that we needed to control the basement. We struggled with, on the governance side. Well, how do we, 
how do we manage that? What, what is it we're talking about? What types of decisions will we make as a result? And frankly, I think until we jumped in, and we did for a while, the committee just was all over the place. But now we're kind of we're on the right track. And he, he actually, I think, had a smile on his face. <laughs> he saw the guy gets up at 3 o'clock in the morning, works out. Works out for a couple hours, has this routine that's incredible, and I read. I don't read the way everybody else reads. I read as a job. I didn't know how to respond to that. You know, then at about seven, he starts his work. The New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. Every, yeah, those are just two. Then, yeah. I didn't get paper. Oh, yeah. Before seven, and not scan. So having an essence on the committee was the right thing to do, and I think, you know, putting some footing is, it got the attention it deserved, and it's led by excellent individuals. Did after follow, because with Jamie and that being on the committee, after, did after always have a community like they have now, which is what we want Jamie's on in the seat, did they just start theirs after ours? They've always had it? You always have been there, I mean, it's marketing. Yeah, and communications yeah, with, with now a bigger focus on community engagement. This whole community engagement idea, I feel like, has come up in the last several years to make it a component of that of marketing and communications because there has been such an emphasis on telling your story from so many different stakeholders within APTA. So the community engagement piece has, has been added um, to that, but it's always been marketing and communications. I think it's a good reminder too that our stakeholders are internal and external. Yeah. They're the community we serve and they're also our employees. So I think that's got another good purpose that keeps us fresh yeah. and like the last meeting is meetings ago we, right. yeah. we talked about blink. You know, blink is our uh, internal yeah. 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 how is that uh, fabulous. That's awesome. I know what happened yesterday or today. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean literally it's you know stuff we just talked about is on blink. And by the way, I just have my eye on John's in the middle of I guess, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be talking. TransPro is going to be, John, tell us about that. I, I think it's interesting. Uh, we engaged TransPro <clears throat> last year. We've been doing rider surveys, and it's been probably going on about two years. Right before the pandemic, we did our last community survey. We brought a bunch of folks over to the Hearst Media Center and brought them in for a day or so. Chris did a lot of presentation on micromobility in Europe and some other topics. And then we also went out to the public. So that's what we'll do now. We have a list of about 20 stakeholders covering five or six verticals from economic development to advocacy organizations to civic organizations. They'll then follow that up with standard general public outreach as well. And this is more amorphous in that I want to know your thoughts on the value of us to the community, not how was your trip today, how many minutes behind or ahead was the bus. This is much more strategic thinking and planning phase. So we do this. We put it together with fixed stuff we do throughout the year. There's also employee engagement coming up, so we have a much more robust program. But getting out in the community, Harm, obviously, Jamie, and myself, we're at these things all the time. But when we're not there, it's probably better to hear what the results are. So we're looking forward to seeing what the results are. Interesting. Okay, anything else? Our next meeting is on uh, May. 31st, Wednesday, May 31st, right here at 110 Waterbury Avenue. Joe Sparata, if this happens to be your last uh, board meeting, we appreciate everything you brought to the board and do for us and your participation. Very active. Good luck in your endeavors. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this is my second go away time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you anyway. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second. It's true. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.